Teddy Roosevelt came from the Roosevelt clan, which is an old family all the way back to New Amsterdam, which is now New York. Just ask, they might be giants if you have any questions on that. They immigrated in 1638, and so they've been around for a long time. Obviously, Teddy Roosevelt, he came from an aristocratic family. Now, he wasn't the wealthiest, but I have heard some people call him middle class, and the guy went to Harvard. Like, he, he was definitely up there. Teddy Roosevelt was actually born right before the Civil War. He was born and had severe asthma from a young age. He was considered to be quite a weakling, and a dandy. And so he actually had to have specialty pillows because normal pillows were too rough for him. Now there's also a possibility that pillows back then were just kind of terrible. They didn't have memory foam after all. Now during the Civil War, obviously this was a very contentious time in the United States. His father was a strong unionist, but his mother was a Confederate. His mother's brothers, in fact, actually fought for the Confederacy. His father, though he supported the Union, did not go off and fight. Now this was a pretty common thing back then, that if you did have a family, if you were mildly well off, middle class, he paid someone to go fight for him. This was pr very common of the time period. A pivotal moment in Teddy Roosevelt's life was that he saw Lincoln's burial procession in New York. Something that I'm guessing all aristocratic families have is they grow up with way too many rules and this was not any different for Teddy Roosevelt. He had to have a very strict code of conduct from a young age, which later in life caused his house to become the big fun party house for all of his kids' friends. And they had endless amounts of animals. As a kid, him and his family traveled around Europe, Egypt, the Holy Land, and he saw a bunch of different things. Another reason why he was not middle class. As a kid, Obviously, shooting was a big thing for him. He got a gun, however, he couldn't hit a single thing. He couldn't hit the broadside of a barn, as they say. So, his father got him some glasses, and it turned out that he had myopia. When he got his, he finally got his glasses, he said it was like opening up the world for the first time, actually being able to see the leaves on the trees. And he didn't know how beautiful the world really was. From then on, he loved shooting sports. He never was a very good shot, he would say, but he did try quite a bit. Because he was so weak, he was sheltered and was homeschooled by private tutors. And from a young age, he always liked going outdoors and collecting samples of animals and bugs and fish and birds and all kinds of random rocks and things like that. And his family dubbed his little bedroom the Roosevelt Museum because there were so many fun things on the walls. However, apparently it did smell quite bad because dead animals and chemicals to preserve dead animals. One day as a child, he got beaten up by other neighborhood boys and he told his father this. His father sat him down and said, you need to start being a man. You need to grow up, be strong. This is when Teddy started the strenuous lifestyle, a common thing that he would talk about throughout his life. As part of this, his father hired a professional boxer to teach him how to defend himself. As he grew older, he became stronger and stronger. He went off to Harvard and had just the worst facial hair. Definitely not the first guy to try and grow some facial hair when you probably can't quite get there. Sadly, soon after he went off to college, his father did die, leaving him a small fortune. Something funny that I learned while researching Teddy Roosevelt was that he was actually really terrible with money. No one trusted him with money. His parents, his his wives, his friends, his kids, all of them tried to take care of his money for him because he would just want to spend it all over the place, like buying a ranch in North Dakota and having all the cows die. Spoiler alert, we're not quite there yet. Like and subscribe, follow for more. Comment down below your favorite Teddy Roosevelt fact. While at Harvard and Columbia, he gave off an aristocratic uppity vibe. When you read some of his writings from that period, you can definitely tell he had that air of preppy dandy that you think of when you think of the Ivy Leagues. What I did really appreciate about Teddy Roosevelt was he loved history. From a young age, he really cared about it. And while at school, he realized that there was no good books about the War of 1812. So what did he do? He decided to write one. At 22, he got married, and a few years later, he had a baby. However, his wife died because of complications from the birth, and his mother died on the exact same day, which was Valentine's Day. In his journal, he just wrote a big X. The light was gone out of my life. Now, a year before, he went and fulfilled his dream of becoming a cowboy. This was a common thing of the period that aristocrats from all over the world would come to the West to live their cowboy lifestyle. And Teddy Roosevelt was no different. He wanted to live out his dream of hunting bison, and he did. Part of this was he went out and bought a ranch, and he would go back and forth between New York and his ranch out in North Dakota. He spent a lot of time out there grieving from his loss of his wife. Even though he was considered to be kind of a dandy, everyone respected him because unlike a lot of the other aristocrats, he worked really hard, would sleep on the floor with the rest of the guys, and never complained. The story of when he went out to North Dakota was he brought with him a handcrafted Tiffany knife. Which, as an Eagle Scout, I can tell you, I've done a lot of things with a lot of pocket knives. I have never seen a Tiffany knife. That's very fun, sir. Continue working really hard, and everyone in the area grew to love him. Now, at one point, he did go into this one town that was known for its shootouts, and one of his friends told him, don't carry a gun out there, because they're going to get you. And one thing led to another, and a guy tried to get in a fight with him. 
Thankfully, he was able to de-escalate, but he never carried a gun in that town again. Because if you had a gun with you, to them, that meant you were ready for a fight. He did carry a gun with him everywhere else he went, though. Time in North Dakota was really pivotal for him. That was really his coming of age time. He went out and he bought this ranch and he had all these cattle. Sadly, they all died one winter and they just completely froze to death. He lost all of his money. Another great story of when he was out in North Dakota was some cattle thieves went and stole his boat and he had to go track them down. And he went down there and he followed them for days on end until he got his boat back because he needed that for fishing. He stayed awake for the entire trip back. He read Tolstoy's Anna Karenina, which makes me want to read that book. I need to look into that more though. Something else that I always think is funny with cowboys is that they would actually read those cowboy novels that we think of about cowboys. And so when he finished Anna Karenina, he borrowed a book from one of those thieves that was about cowboys. In total, Roosevelt actually spent less than a year in North Dakota, which is funny how much of an influence it had on the rest of his life. And that was really when he consolidated his time as a conservationist, really caring about the land, about animals. This entire time he was involved in politics and his main thing was trying to clean it up and get rid of cronyism, which is kind of funny since he wasn't an aristocrat. He probably got his job because of nepotism because he was in his early 20s when he got hired. Now, two years after the death of his wife, he decided to remarry. However, this was extremely hard for him. It felt like he had really betrayed her at first, but in the end, he decided that that was what he needed to do for himself as well as his daughter, Alice. In total, he had five children, Teddy Roosevelt III, Kermit, Ethel, Archibald, Quinton, obviously Alice from his first wife. They all had some of the most insane stories. I'm definitely gonna have to talk about them. At 28 years old, he ran for mayor of New York and lost. He got appointed to the Civil Service Commission where he worked to get rid of nepotism and cronyism in the government. This was a major issue of the time. Good thing we don't have cronyism anymore in our government. With his success from that, he became the New York City Police Commissioner, getting rid of corruption. He would walk the streets at night, making sure that the police officers weren't taking bribes or abusing people. Big thing that he loved was spending time with his children as they grew up. He was really a kid at heart and spent a lot of time just horsing around with them. But he also wanted to raise strong children. He really saw that later on from his kids. Soon after this, he became an Assistant Secretary of the Navy. And if you've ever seen NCIS, you know how important of a job this is. Essentially, he was in charge of the entire Navy and was Secretary of the Navy. However, that title went to another guy whose name was John Long, but he was sick the entire time, leaving Roosevelt to do almost all the work. He was really one of the people that expanded the U.S. Navy. Following the end of the Civil War, a lot of it had shrunk down, but he was really trying to build it back up and modernize it. After the USS Maine exploded in Havana Harbor, he was really one of the people gunning for war against Spain. First president of the time, William McKinley, did not want to go to war, but Roosevelt, without permission, told the Navy to prepare for war. Influence from Teddy Roosevelt, as well as elsewhere, we did eventually go to war against Spain. That war was incredibly easy and won fairly quickly. However, Teddy Roosevelt did play a pivotal role starting the Rough Riders. Now, what's so funny about the Rough Riders, it was made up of a bunch of dandies from the Ivy Leagues, a bunch of hardcore cowboys from North Dakota. There was miners, there was Native American, and decided to form up their own regiment. It just sounds like a really funny buddy movie. If anyone ever wants to make that movie, let me know. He went down to Cuba with his friends, the Rough Riders, and they fought in the battles of San Juan Hill and Kettle Hill. Which were fairly minor battles, however, he did lead the charge up those hills, causing victory. This really helped him become well-known. He also brought some of his friends who were journalists with him at the time. He ended up getting nominated for the Medal of Honor. However, the army blocked it because they felt like he was grabbing too many headlines. This would be later corrected in 2001, making him and his son, Teddy Roosevelt III, one of the only father-son duos to receive the Medal of Honor. The other ones being Douglas and Arthur MacArthur. But we're not there yet. After this, he became super famous and he got elected as governor of New York. He made many reforms, preventing socialists and anarchists from taking over the government, which was a major issue at the time because with all of this turmoil and the Industrial Revolution in full force, small reforms needed to be made to keep the structure of democracy afloat. He was one of the main progressives of that era. However, he doesn't have the taint of progressivism like Woodrow Wilson has because Teddy Roosevelt believed in racial equality, at least compared to the time period, versus Woodrow Wilson, who resegregated the government. Once again, we're not there yet. Bully, follow for more! Now, the Republican Party was afraid that he was going to try and run for president because he was so popular, so they decided to try and give him the kill shot of politics, making him the vice president. Because as we know, once people become vice president, they kind of just disappear, the most current circumstances excluded. Often considered to be an imperialist, but he also had quite a lot of anti-imperialist tendencies. And so it is really interesting 
all of the different ways in which Teddy Roosevelt was a contradiction. Now, soon after he was elected as vice president, and William McKinley was shot by an anarchist, and Teddy Roosevelt became president. I feel like this video is getting a little long. I'm gonna make a part two talking all about Teddy Roosevelt as president, as well as his time after office, his attempt at being reelected, his discoveries of a river in the Amazon, and much more. He did incredible things after his life, as well as all of his children were awesome. Hit that subscription button, like, and comment down below your favorite part of the Teddy Roosevelt story.